how's it going? So I'm out wild camping again, and what a stunning evening. Perfect conditions, and I'm back in one of my favorite locations. Wow. Look at that. We've been here about an hour. Tents are already set up, look. So we're gonna be chatting quite a bit about gear in this one. Uh, things like what gear we started out with. Uh, is some of the gear that we use now way too expensive and why we can't help ourselves from buying more. So we're like twins today. <laughs> We've both got the MLD Dura mid tents. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a faff to set up for me because um, I've had to put some more guy lines on. And I wasn't quite sure uh, how high to, to put the trekking pole. So first time I did it a little bit low. It's a learning curve, but Andy's helped me out. <laughs> Looks much better now. Let's have a goosey inside. Fitted the inner. These new poles are much stronger. So this is the tent that leaked on me in the last trip to the Lake District. I've since re-seam sealed it. So it's not as pretty, but hopefully it's fully watertight now. Hey, let's get some grub on. There's no slab of beef today. Chicken tikka masala. Stove's really good in the wind. It's the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. Expensive. It's about 70 quid for a canister stove. Really good, but I don't think it's any better performance wise than the Soto Windmaster, which is around 42 quid, I think. I prefer the way that this one falls down though, but 30 quid difference, I'm not so sure. It's not quite restaurant standard. Where are you being that from? Uh, we ordered these ones from... I think it's Base Camp Foods, is it? A bit like Base Camp Foods. I think it's Base Camp. Right, the sun's gone down, we're all fed. Time for a chin wag. Oh! This isn't as comfortable as the last lot. We had a little bench I'm next sure to the tent, didn't we? A nice little uh, rock seat there, didn't we? So, this you were saying on the way up is roughly the area where you did your first ever wild camp. It is, a long time ago. A bit, little bit further up, up, up back there. The first ever, I've, I've camped up here with friends before, like, but it was because I knew the area quite well. I thought, I know area, like I say, I know it quite well. First solo wild camp, I thought I'm heading up there. And that was it. So come on then, uh, what was in your pack? <laughs> what gear were you using? Uh, everything back kitchen sink, I think. <laughs> Van Gogh, Van Go, can't remember the actual model of pack, but it was a Van Gogh pack, 60 litre, 55 to 60 litre. Yeah, expandable, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and it was absolutely cramped at rafters. Tent were packed on art, strapped at art side. Mesh pockets were full. Van Gogh tent. <laughs> Van Gogh sleeping bag. But it worked, didn't it? it yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, you know, it's, it's cheap, cheerful gear, but it works. So my first ever wild camp was actually hammock. Um, and it was up in the, the woodland above the reservoir, in the reservoir. Ah. Um, Peter Nutwood. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And um, I took me, it was a Bergen, Berghaus. Cyclops or something, 100 plus 20 litres. Huh. Then he'll pack it, rafters, like you said. You know that hill that you're climbing up at the start of um, Side at Reservoir? Yeah. Just over the little waterworks thing. Yeah. Oh, God, I was blowing out my pack. ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely agony again up there. Um, but it's something that you learn. You don't, you don't need all of that gear. So it was DD hammock or whatever it was, I think, it, yeah, tarp. Um, Little crappy little gas stove, but I'm saying my first actual, well, first tent I got was a Van Gogh Banshee 300, um, but I only used that on campsites. Yeah. And uh, I got a 
a six moons designs. Um, oh, I saw all those. Skyscape oh. Scout, I think it was. Oh. Yeah. And yeah, that I used that on Bamford Edge was the first place that I ever I ever wild camped. Yeah. And but that was I think it was a, a Van Gogh pack as well. Van Gogh contour fifty plus ten or something like yeah. that. <laughs> so I can't I can't remember model at pack, but it were it were a Van Gogh, a green and bright you know the old bright green Van Gogh packs. Yeah. I, I like I say I've got I've got the old I mean I'm in the dual whip. Some people still use them now, you know the um reflective um like a sheet thing. Sheet thing what yeah. people put in the windscreen yeah. car windscreens. I've yeah. got one of them. Uh a multi mat. I don't think it I think it was just like a, it, it weren't even a didn't even have any R volume. <laughs> but, you know, I'd a, a great big van I can't remember again, I can't remember what model of Van Gogh sleeping bag, but it was a great big massive thing, it was like about you know, like the army bouncing yeah. bomb things, it was somewhat like that. But I, I enjoyed it and it, it, it was warm, I had a good night. So yeah, so I've trans transitioned from woodland stuff. So I started off with bushcrafty things, so it was yeah. all big, heavy, bulky. Um, and the first time I, I came into the hills, I realised pretty sharpish that I couldn't get away with that stuff yeah. um, on a regular basis. So right from an, an early thing, I was looking for lighter gear. Mm. Um, you know, it was trekking pole tents, that kind of stuff, yeah. early, early on. Um, but I got a, a Van Gogh... Zenith, I think, 200. Used that in pretty much all conditions. And, mm. <laughs> you know, to be fair, it broke a pole um, when it got windy, but um, Vango sent me another one. Yeah. So it didn't help me at the time, but you know, I think they're renowned for breaking poles, though, some of the Vangos, yeah. aren't they? That, that first, my, my first ever attempt was a, a Vango, I think they call it a Soul or something like that, 200. Yeah. The, the, they advertise it a tour man a bit, though, no way on the surface yeah. we're a tour man or that. <laughs> that what's aim it was the, 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 the something like 10 or 12 mil thick ca uh, yeah. fiberglass, fiberglass poles. poles <laughs> and it, I think I got maybe half a dozen camps out in it and one at pole. It, in fact, it were up here. Yeah. One at poles, it were in a pitch first. You put poles in, clipped it, put it fly on, and it, it just went. Oh, and I thought, okay. oh, yeah, that's it. And that that was it. That that had seen its day. Got half, got, you know, like I say, I got half a dozen camps out in it. And then I bought me what I considered my first proper wild camping tent, the Wild Country Zephros Two. Yeah. And I had that for years, and I I, lo I loved that tent. It was a cracking tent. Yeah. They're solid, aren't they? You know, yeah. there's plenty of room in them. Yeah. Um, they're a good design. A lot of there's a lot of tents that still use that design. Yeah. They've they've. Acto modified, kind of stuff, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> modified it a little bit in yeah. certain ways, but the the centre hoop and the two, you know, your, your, your poles, at, poles the end. at the end. There's a lot of tents still use that type of design even now. So, when did you start, you know, swapping your gear out and trying to go um, better quality, shall we say, or lighter? And what were your reasons behind it? I've never been one for weighing my gear. And I've, I've always said, and I still say, nah, I come camping for joy in it and comfort. My pack weight will weigh what it weighs. Yeah. But I soon discovered that you sort of, if you were going to be doing it on a regular basis for enjoyment, then you didn't want to be hiking 20 kilograms worth of weight on your back up and yeah. up so you sort of start looking at more you know i, I got uh i got the Lerberg soul off a, a good mate at the time he let me have it at a real good price uh i upgraded my mat to an exped mat not not going lighter as such but just upgrading to better quality gear yeah didn't weigh any lighter some bits did uh went to i bought, I bought an alp kit Sky High 900 bag at time that were at the at time they were you know there were a, a lot of money but it were it were a, a damn good bag. Yeah, I've still got the. Uh, the six, I've, I've the still six got it now. Nah, it must be <laughs> yeah, it must be six seven year old yeah, that bag now. I've still got it. So still does a job. But then, 
in recent years, like sort of maybe four or five, three, maybe four or five years, you you do look at starting to lighten stuff up. Yeah. Again, you know, especially over this last 12 months or so, I'm not purposely thinking to myself, I'm going to go ultra lightweight, but you just you just think, you know, like when you're climbing hill at the beginning of the day or, and, and you're, you're towing your bag out and blowing out your arse. <laughs> And you're thinking, God, I wish my pack were about five kilogram light. I'd be getting up here a lot easier. But you just, you know, it's like I said to my Mrs. Kerry, I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't go out drinking, I don't buy other expensive clothes. This is my hobby. Yeah. So if I'm going to spend money, this is what I spend my money on. And you, you buy, you buy a bit more expensive gear and lighter gear, and it, it, it does, it does help you out when you're doing multi days and. Long walks, having that lighter pack weight on your back, it, it, it is a, it is a, it does make a difference. Yeah, it does make a difference. I agree. So, so you got the Hillerberg, and I've said I was watching your videos for years, and that featured heavily. That was your go-to tent for a yeah. long period of time, wasn't it? And in more recent times, you've had a few other tents and stuff. Yeah. So you, you're starting to get a few more bits of gear. You know, recent. Um, why, why the switch out recent? What, what, what do you, what's your thoughts on the Hillerberg? Have you, has he just given up the ghost or...? Uh, it, that, that solo will probably be, probably be about seven or eight years old now. Yep. Cracking tent, loved it. It was, when I got started getting serious about camping, that was the tent I wanted. It was okay, my dream tent. And when I got it, I just couldn't, every, every week after work, I could not wait to get out in it. And I used it season in, season out, summer, you know, spring, summer, autumn, winter, absolutely brilliant. Didn't, didn't matter about noise, I was out in 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds <laughs> in it and it was just like, I've, I've got the tent, I've got the bomber tent now and I'm going out there. Yeah. You know, but as you, as, like you just said, as times move on, I've always loved this type of tent. Yeah. I've always looked at trekking pole type, pyramid type tents and thought, I really like them. So, well, about 18 months ago too, well, bit, like before lockdown and that, weren't it? I bought that, that uh, soloist, that um, pre-tent soloist. Yep. I used that all last year, throughout summer, from early spring all throughout summer. And I just thought, that's it. I'm making transition. I just, <laughs> I just love this type of tent. Just a, dif a different way of using tents, if you like. Yeah, it's it's totally different. Um, to, it's versatile as well. So I've, you've been using it recently with a bivy bag. Today you've got like a, an inner in it, haven't yeah. you? So you you can get away with it in the winter. Yeah. Um, in the summer you can just take the bivy. You don't need necessarily to put the shelter up if the weather's mm. really good. It's just you've got options, haven't you? And the space yeah. inside them. It's huge. Oh, they're, they're, they're massive. Like you say, I've, 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 I bought that cricket earlier on this year and I've, I'm loving using that. It is, it is more of a biv, uh, uh, a tarp more yeah. than a tent, but it has got that, obviously, as you've seen, a tent look to it. But the dual mid, they have it doors on. You can, if you, if you don't use an inner in it and just lay a ground sheet out, like that polychrome ground sheet I've got, and that foam mat and put your, your mattress down, and your bivy bag in your mat, you've got an absolute tunnel room. It's, yeah. it, it's as you know, you, you know, you, you could probably fit two or three people in them, right on the knee. You know what I mean? You could get three in there yeah. without the inner, just Easy. lay side side yeah. to side. And, so, and as far as weight as well, what's a, what's the solo where we a ground sheet? Two uh, two point four, two point six kilo, something like that. Yeah, it's it's, it's around that, isn't it? Two yeah. point six, two point eight. Yeah. Well, was these these back under these a kilo? Way of, uh, well, under. Yeah. Seven, eight hundred gram or something. Yeah. I think I think the cricket weighs three hundred and something gram. There they are. My bivy bag weighs three two hundred and something bag. Yeah. Uh, two bag two hundred and something gram. My cumulus quilt's about seven hundred. I've got I've got I've, I've got a full base weight there. It's for less than what I these. Know. So so low ways, yeah. you know. It's, it's not just about the weight for me as well. It's it's the room in your pack, the yeah. the bulk. So you know, I'm down. 
I'm a quilt man, as you know. You, yeah. You've recently got a quilt yeah. as well, haven't you? They squash down to nothing, and yeah. you know, it gives you so much more room in your bag. Yeah. Uh, so all year round, I'm using 45, 48 litre packs or whatever it is. Yeah. Regularly, we're out in nicer conditions in 33 litre packs or whatever. Um, if I didn't have the camera gear, I could probably get away with 33 litre pack. Yeah. For at yeah. least eight months of the year, yeah. Um, just because my stuff squashes down to nothing, yeah. which is well, that's what I like about that atom pack. Um, I, I'd again, you know, looking at these types of shelters, I've all us I, I bought that Osprey uh Exos 48 again, five or six years. It's been an absolutely fantastic pack, that's so comfy. I've used that all year round, but I've always cast an eye over that type of bag, yep. You know, the, the frameless bag, as, the pack as they call them. I took plunge, bought one. I wish I'd have bought one years ago. Because yeah. I, I, that bag is absolutely fantastic. It carries so well. It, it's just... I love it. I just, yeah, love, so, I just love that bag. So I bought I bought the Exos today. Um, so for the last half a dozen camps or whatever, I've been using the, the Atom Packs one. And they're very uh, similar sort of weight bags. Um, similar sort of volume however as i said when i got to car park felt like i got more in that the the bungee space the pockets yeah. and everything just gives you like endless room yeah. um <laughs> so i'm kind of wishing that i'd bought the yeah. atom packs one myself i think trouble is with that exos as as like i say as much as it is a good bag oh I've really got to have my the, ears. the air system because it curves and you've got that mesh, you know, for the airflow, that intrudes into the space in the bag. Yeah, probably. Whereas the Atom pack, because it's a straight pack bag, once you open it up, it's just... It's you, like, you get it's that like a full volume of waste the bag. Waste bin in it, just yeah. fill it up, yeah. cram everything into it. And we have in the roll top, you know, the roll top system at top as well. You you can roll that down to 30 litre. Yeah. Or, you know, you, you put your pot, you, once you, if you fill it, say, like I was saying earlier, if I, I'm I'm expecting to get my full winter gear in there. Yeah. If I pack it a little little bit more, uh, not cautiously, but a bit more sensibly. Once you've put your poppers and rolled your top down maybe two or three times, I, I reckon I'll you'll I'll, get it all I'll in. Get my winter kit in that bag easy. So, so the atom pack um, and your tent, they they're custom made. Um, what's your thoughts on custom made gear as opposed to? You know, off the shelf, mass produced stuff. Um, which do you think is better? What do you think the pros and cons are? I think your custom med gear is made by people who do what we do. Yeah. Like the Atom Packs, if you read their website. They've hiked and hiked and hiked, yeah, haven't they? The it's Tom and Dexter. Dexter. Yeah. De I've spoken to De Dexter quite a few times and if you watch his YouTube channel, he's doing lands into John O'Groats, coast to coast, Pennine Way, yeah. using atom packs. I, I may be wrong, but I think he holds something like the record for lands into John O'Groats, or one of these long distance trails, he holds some sort of record for doing it, which is, you know, it's absolute, and that's what he uses. He yeah. uses the atom packs. And th they do design them based on how they use them, the problems yeah. that they come up with on yeah. a hike. What you, you if we can, had this, tell what if we had that? With, yeah. with the features that bag's got and the other ones in the range, you can tell it's been designed by somebody who does, who goes and does a lot of yeah. hiking and a lot of wild camping. Same, same with shelters. I know, I know these are, that's on it downfall with these jewel mids and that, they do come from America and imported in, but you can tell the the design by people who do it. Yeah. Whereas maybe some of your other tents, um, you know, like like your Exos bags and that, are they designed by people that get out there and do it? Yeah, they're also they're made for the average man. Yeah. Um, so whether you're six foot two, yeah, six foot one, whereas you might have a slight discrepancy and. Yeah. One might fit another person slightly better. Whereas if it's custom made, you can 
You can get it done to your torso, for yeah. example, on your hip belt yeah. to your waist. Like when you order a knot and pat, they want to know your, your, you know, your back length. Your, yeah. You know, there's, there's several things they want so to So you know, know it's going to fit, don't you? Yeah. If you're good to go outdoors and get an Osprey Exos, it, it, Exos, it's small back, medium back, large back, isn't it? Yeah. And that, them sizes. And the in-betweens. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, quite a yeah. The exos you can't even alter the no, you know, the, the the strap height, can you? No. Um, so as for the shelter, so <laughs> it's took me a while to get it pitched today, um, but I I just seam sealed it, so it had been um, I had to put guy lines on, that's why, and I got the height wrong. <laughs> but I found that it didn't when it came, it didn't come with the guy lines fitted. It didn't come properly seam sealed. Um, do you think that those kind of things should come as standard or <laughs> should, because we are enthusiasts, be expected to do all of that? I reckon personally that the shelter should be able to just pitch it up and it's fit for purpose straight away. Um, what's your thoughts? There's, I think there's probably two sides to it, isn't there? Yeah. I do agree with what you're saying. You should be, it should come. You should have all your guys on it and everything, but then you get you get the somebody that when it comes, they change it all. They cut everything off yeah. and put their own on. They go with lighter guy lines. They go with yeah. different runners, line locks. So these type of shelters, I think they look at it and think, well, supply them with line anyway. Yeah, and then they can just basically do what they want yeah. with it. If they want to put their line our lines on. So be it. If they want to put their own lines on, so be it. Yeah. So I think the sort of, I think the sort of like their idea is to to go with that ethos. Yeah. You know, send the shelter that. So as you know, it's already got the uh, elastic bungees and bits on it, and it on yeah. tabs. And then, like I say, you know, you know, as it comes, it comes with x amounts of line, and it meters with a line, and then it's up. Like I say, it's up to you whether you actually use that line or. Or put your own on yeah. to go with lighter, thinner line and different line locks. It's down to you then, isn't it? Yeah. So obviously custom made gear is going to be more expensive because it's not like mass produced. There's long waiting lists and all, and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Because um, a lot of people ask, they'll say that the stuff that we have is, is too expensive. It's not for the average person. Um, what would you recommend? Tent, for example. Somebody just starting out. Um, wants to try wild camping. Uh, obviously not the Van Gogh soul because <laughs> yeah. the poles break. Uh, but yeah, starting out, what would you, what would you recommend? Because I started out with military stuff, um, but yeah. I reckon that's too heavy now, and it's not not cheap anymore. Um, you start Van Gogh stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean. Van, Van Gogh Banshees historically get a bashing, don't they? Yeah. But they are a cracking little tent. You can't you can't deny it. No. Uh, same as, like I say, a Wild Country Zephros 2 or something like that. They are, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on prices nowadays, but uh, I'm sure there'll be something like that. 150 one, quid or something yeah, like you can get them for. 130, 150 tops or something like that. Yeah. Um, the Elms, the Wild Country Elms. I mean, yeah, but they're never in stock. That's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> because they are quite popular yeah. tents for 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 starting out, aren't they? Yeah, and and they are good. They are they are really good. They're cheap enough, and they're a good, decent tent to start out with. And you're not you're not spending that big money. Yeah, on a piece of equipment when you might have a few needs and think, it's not for me. This is it's, it's a. And you can sell it, and somebody will always buy it. Yeah, it's, it's a double edged sword. But isn't if it? you jump straight into it and buy something like this. Getting stuff imported in and think you might have one neat in this and think it's not for me. It's not for me. <laughs> you yeah. Know? The, the the problem is, you know, if you buy budget gear to start off with, um, if you love it, you nailed on to have to get rid of it all and buy yeah. better gear because yeah. <laughs> because we all do it. We yeah. we like chasing the the next best thing and all. Like I've got whatever the problem when it comes to stoves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I must have 20 stoves, something like that. And yeah, that's not all of them that I've had in the past. Yeah. And I don't need any because you know, the first one that I ever got, like me, Trangia, still does, I still use it. It still does what I want it to do yeah. and I don't need anything else. But 
I just like playing with them and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, trying something different. So, so, so I started out with, it weren't a jet boil, it was the, um, I forget what they call it now, but it was like a cheaper version. Like a Highlander or something like yeah. that? Or, uh, well, back, back then the story was the jet boil, there were two guys that started out with jet boil. They had a bit of a falling out. One guy kept the jet boil company. Yeah. Other guy started making his own. I can't remember what they call it. It was orange. It was exactly fire the same. Fire maple or something like that. No, I can't remember what they call it. It wasn't fire no. maple. But anyway, it was more or less identical. And I, and I bought the cheaper version. And it, it was just as good. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but going back to that, you know, going the more you get into it, you, you buy different gear. And I bought a pocket rocket tool. Uh, then I bought the Alp Kit Coro, which is the Al um, is it titanium or alum aluminium? It's, it's the one that lays flat as well, isn't it? Where you yeah. have a separate gas. Titanium with it with the line off it. With yeah. The, the separate. They're really thing. sturdy, them, aren't they? Yeah, and I I use that for years. Yeah. Summer all all year, all through winter, with Primus Power Gas, and it were absolutely fantastic. And but then I discovered meths. Yeah. And I've never looked back since. I, I know. There's, I would not go back to gas now. Yeah. Uh, that storm in Norman Cone that I was now, with my mighty 900 pot, my Alpkit mighty 900, and that's it, summit collapsible pot, and my little sto um, speedster stove. That's your stove. That's your boot kit from now on. Yeah. You can't be tempted. No. <laughs> there's there's no else out there at the minute that would tempt me from... Yeah. It, it, like I've shown on my video, I, all that lot goes in my pot the yeah. 900 mil pot and it's there a yeah. full cook system and no matter what the temperature pot, the snow whatever it will be it'll light. It, it lights and you can yeah. boil water yeah and that's all you need really isn't it yeah. I, I always like it like i've shown you i use one of them jet lighters to yeah. light it and it, it lights first time every yeah. time and been out through you know winter all, all year i've been using that for the last 18 months or so okay and, and i just absolutely love using it it's right. a nice calm relaxed way you so you're, 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 you're one stove man then. Yeah. Um, so what is your... So stoves are my, obviously, guilty pleasure. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure when it comes to camping or outdoor stuff that you just can't get enough of? The walking gear. Yeah. <laughs> you, you love your colourful outfits yeah. and stuff, don't you? You can't I'm, help it. I'm constantly looking at different shoes, different coloured bottoms, coats, jackets... I've I've got a real, real bad weak spot for I go down to the rab shop and I cannot I just it's like it's like that devil on my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, go on Andy, you know you want that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh do I buy this or do I not? And it's like, go on, go on, you know you want it. You know you don't really need it, but you know you want it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between need and want, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But say so, say so you don't you don't go out drinking a lot, you don't um you don't smoke. No. You're not a gambler. No. So you know, it's your your hobby, isn't it? So yeah. that's my, my casual clothes at home, I wear night tracky bottoms or Adidas tracky bottoms, a pair of Levi's, a nuddy and a, a, a pair of Adidas <laughs> or Nike. My everyday chains. stuff is that's what it. I like wear when I'm in the hills. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got obviously book jeans and stuff like that, but I ain't got a suit if I've got to go to a funeral if it's like that. I've got. To... <laughs> um, yeah, I don't spend money on like going out gear or anything. No, no, I spend no. money on going out gear. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my thing. <laughs> so I mean, over years I've gone from uh, I've always wore scarper boots. So I've had like scarper SL active boots, the leather boots, like the ones yeah. that you know that I recommended to you. Love them boots again, seven, eight year old, still going strong now. Scarpa Manta for winter, the the blue winter boots that yeah. I've got. But just this last couple of years, I've gone to Saliwa and I've now got three pairs of Saliwa boots yeah. because I've found that they suit my shape of foot. I've, I've got, a, I'm a size 11, yeah, and I've got like a long, narrow foot. And Saliwa, they, they just suit my shape of foot absolutely perfect. So, so I got them uh, repace. Then last year for last summer, I bought me send them uh, Volta, the uh, winter boots. Yeah. So they're like a B2 for long winter boot. 
And then this year, I bought myself these wildfires, these like cross trainer type boots. This, there's something that so people have asked me before. Can you recommend boots and all that kind of stuff? It's something that's very personal um, yeah. footwear. Yeah. Because everyone's got different feet and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So if you've got another, you need, foot, to, you need to try them on. You need to get yeah. a, a, if you've a got boot another fit foot, if you can. Then Salee would have really, a really sort of market the sense to a narrow foot. Yeah. And like I was saying to you, the come with a, the come with a sole that's got three different setups. It yeah. the, the 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 sole velcros into three different types of shape of foot. Oh, the insole thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this insole. Yeah. Whereas like Scarpa are more tailored to a wider foot. Yeah, that, that's why I like the Scarpa. Yeah. And I, I was finding myself really. I mean, my scarf is really, really tightening my laces up, whereas yeah. this, the, the Salee was, you don't have to do that because they, they are a narrower boot. And like I said, I, I, I think I've found my niche in boot yeah. manufacturer for, for my shape of foot. <laughs> and then the thing is that they'll change everything next year or something yeah, like that, so you'll be, you'll be ruined. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Brands. So, are there any particular brands other than Rab that um, you, you tend to go for, or is it if you see something you like? I know, say your clothing, you you love that, but if you were buying a stove, would you like follow a, a particular manufacturer or a tent? Do you know what I mean? Are there things that you're loyal to? Not really. Like I say, Rab, Rab I've wore Rab for years. Yeah, a, a lot of years. So that is, it's, they've got quite a, I think of a sort of mountain and mountain equipment, the, their range of clothing yeah. is a lot wider. Yeah. It's got a lot of wider perspective than what, in, in my opinion, some other people that like mountain equipment might say different, but, that, you know, we're all entitled to his opinion, aren't we? Yeah. I, I like Rab. As, as to other things, um, not really. Tents, as you know, I've had several different tent manufacturer tents over the years. Stoves, again, I've had a, two or three different, so there's not really, as, as as far as other equipment goes, it's whatever suits my needs. Yeah. Suits, I do. Whenever I'm buying out, I always, I'll spend hours on laptop. Researching. Going on YouTube, researching, seeing what other people think on it, and then I'll make my own decision based on that, and and I'll go for whatever suits my it's, needs and requirements. I'm I'm saying with that, um, I get a lot of questions from people that saying, "Can you recommend this, this, uh, yeah. what tent shall I buy? What sh full setup shall I buy?" And I think it's one of them things that you've 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 got to sort of teach yourself a little bit. Yeah. Um, because what I like doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. Yeah. I like sleeping in a bivy bag, yeah. and I can't imagine lots of other people enjoying that experience. It yeah. could be very claustrophobic. It, yeah. But for me, it brings me much, much closer to nature. Yeah. Um, so you know, I like certain, um, like, Trousers, for example, these Montan ones, I like them because they're, re they're really comfortable, they dry really quick, um, but they might not not suit somebody else. Mm. So, what? So, when it comes to questions and stuff, what sort of thing have you been asked the most? <laughs> you know, well, pretty, pretty much same. What you know? Um, what What's the boot? You know, the, a certain video. What's them no boots? What's them boots you're wearing? Like I was saying earlier on, my latest video. What What What's them? What's them trousers, trousers. you're wearing? What yeah. you know? What what's that jacket you're wearing? What's the tent? Uh, you get asked on Instagram. You get questions on Instagram off of people. Um, just getting into wild camping. What what sort of mattress or tent or boot? You know, you get asked and and I always say the same to everybody. I can make, I can make, recommend you something. Might not as you've just said. Might not work for you. Yeah. I do my research and I go on like what I've just been saying. Do my research and I, I go and have a look if you can. I go and have a look and, <laughs> and and go with what I think will suit me. Don't all suit everybody else. 
like I've just been on the back with boots, I've got a long, narrow foot. Yeah. So Lee will suit my style, of my shape of foot. If I recommend recommend these boots to somebody that's a size six and the, the feet, feet uh, like that, they could be in a world of pain in them. They yeah. might, might come out on a little walk and be like, Christ, they're not good, these boots for me. So you've got to, uh, as well as giving advice out and taking advice off of what you consider more experienced people, you do need to go out there, do your own research, go out and look at stuff and try stuff on. And an element to make your own decision. Yeah. It's like I say, taking advice off of other people don't always work for you. So, stoves, for example, um, a transia, you can get it for a tenner and it will work in all conditions and all that kind of stuff. So you don't need to spend £120 on a jet boiler or anything no. like that to, to have a good time. There are some areas that I think that you need to spend a bit more money when it comes to camping. Do you agree? Yeah, So you know, where if, you, if you've got to spend the big bucks, what items would that be on? A mat. Yeah. 100% <laughs> a mat. I say that every time. Yeah. It is the, the one thing that... I won't compromise on. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had so many uncomfortable nights, cold nights. So people just think that... Too many you, people fall into the trap if they buy a warm sleeping bag. They think that that's they'll it. They'll be all right and that's yeah. it and they'll just buy a cheap mat. Yeah. People that are getting into it and even some people that have been doing it a while don't realise that you lose more heat to ground yeah. than you do... From, from, from top, escape, yeah. From from top. You, you're better off with a, a really good quality insulated mat and yeah. just sleeping in your clothes and your waterproofs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you you, know can, what I mean? you then, can get away a with a, a lesser warm sleeping bag if you've got a good quality mat. Yeah. If you've got like a, a sleeping bag that's rated to minus twenty, and you're sleeping on a sleeping mat that's got no R value, you're going to be cold. Yeah. Because. It's like it's like this with quilts and that, isn't it? When you when you are laid in a sleeping bag, all that down, all that synthetic insulation that's between you and your mat, get squashed. You come, you, you're squashing it and you're compressing it, so it loses all its thermal quality. Yeah. So if you but if you've got a good insulated mat underneath you, it reflects your heat. It back. reflects your heat back. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's one of them, isn't it? So you don't. So you, you've just got a new thermost, haven't you? Yeah. What are they, about 160 quid now, something like that, 150 uh, quid? That'd be a bit more. That cost me 180. Yeah, 180 pounds. So you don't have to spend that. So you, you can, if you want, you know, buy these, like, closed cell foam mats and have a couple yeah. of those. And, yeah. But, but you suddenly you've, you've got masses and masses of bulk strapped to your pack. Yeah. They're not comfortable at all. Um, so if, if you can't afford them... You're just gonna to have to compromise in other areas, aren't you? Yeah. And well, I've heard that's in Matt Light Five for years. I use that through winter. I think it's got an R value of something like three point seven. Yeah. And I and I bought myself a, a a ripstop aluminium sheet that yeah. I used to put under that during colder months, and I never once had a cold night's sleep yeah. on that. So you can layer up. That's a good thing. So yeah. Um, I recommend people that you can get a cheaper pad that's inflatable. It gives you the comfort. Yeah. But you need to put something underneath it. Yeah. So buy something like a Thermo Z light or, a, yeah. like you say, one of these, you know, thicker closed cell phone yeah. mats with a bit of reflection. Even if you to go it. to like uh, Decathlon or something like that, they're only about six or seven quid. Yeah, and buy one of their their uh, one of them. It's like a it's a, it's a roll mat, and it's like uh, reflective on one side. Yeah. Get buy one of them. Roll that up. Put your Mat on cheaper top mat of that, on top. cheaper mat on top, and it, it, that'll do a job. Yeah. So, sleeping bags or quilts? What are you now? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still like that, mate. Oh, yeah. I still like me sleeping bags, but as you know, I've been using that cumulus for I've probably had that about two years now. Yeah. And I really enjoy using that. I've, 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 I've used that. I used that all through last winter. Just layered up with me. Um, me rub are uh, gone down pants on. Yeah. Me hot socks, and then I, 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 I never sleep in a down jacket. Yeah. But what I what I what I always sleep in is like uh, like what I've got on now. Like when I get to camp, when I set up, I always change out of my clothes that I've walked up in, 
and I've got a, a Rab Merino base layer on. Yeah. And then I'll put like a thinner mid layer on, a, a grid, grid back fleece on, and then my down jacket. So when I go to bed, I'll take this down jacket off and get in with just my base layer and my mid layer. Yeah. And you get, you know, you cinch it up round your neck and, and you're perfectly fine. But I'm, I'm, I've slept in that uh, that cumulus quilt last all last winter just with that and, and, yeah. and I'm perfectly fine, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm quilt all the way, except I do like the baggy and the bivvy. Yeah. If I'm in a bivvy, a sleeping bag is better, I think, yeah. just because you've got... You're more exposed to the wind hitting you and yeah. stuff like that, and there's less chance for drafts yeah. and things. Um, but as you know, like when we were when we were down at Rab earlier on it year, we all got gifted them bags, didn't we? Now yeah. I got that. Um, you got the Nocino extreme one or something, didn't you? Nine hundred. Because you were tall. Yeah. <laughs> if only I was tall. <laughs> and that it's it's rated down to some that is like rated down to about minus twenty. Yeah. Uh, and I, when we got it, I did use it a couple of times, but it was sort of, when was it, about March, April time I or something remember. like that? It might have been. But yeah, that is a warm bag. Yeah. I'm, I'm Like I was saying on the way up, I am actually looking forward to winter coming again and actually using that bag and putting it to test and just seeing how, how, good, it how is. good it really is. Because I reckon that it, that is a really good bag, that. Going back, it's double weight to what Miss. Quilt is, is, yeah. Because I think it's somewhat like 1.4 kilogram, whereas yeah. my quilt's 700. So I am doubling weight, but I'm I'm prepared to you carry that and use it just to see how good it yeah. is. So back to, to gear. So for years I've been like trying loads of different stuff. Um, I, I went down the road of trying to go ultra light, found that it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and then you start thinking, I want some more of the comforts again. I want to enjoy it. Um, and I'm I'm fascinated by new bits of gear. I want to try it. I want to use it. I mean, what do you think it is that that sort of attracts us to this, like, like rabbit the, in the headlight saying, I must have that, I must have that? Um, where, because <laughs> we don't need it. Because no. you know, I've got a tent that I only need a tent, a stove, a sleeping bag. I think <laughs> it's the no shiny, isn't it? Yeah. It's it, it's one of them it's it's hard to explain, isn't it? We we love getting out and camping, we love coming out and walking and camping. And if there's a new bit of gear that replaces some old, we're all over it, aren't we? Yeah. But it's uh, to actually put a I don't know, how would you say it? To put a reason uh there's no logic to it, so really, yeah, is there's it? no it's, logic. It's, 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 it's a waste of money on the most part, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. Some of it, you, you can get good money back for it. So you can buy a Wild Country Helm 2 for 150 quid or whatever it is, and you can sell it for 130 quid usually. Yeah. Um, there were, not so long ago, with the Hilleberg Solos, people were selling them for more yeah. than they paid for them because... Well, they were, were not a, in stock. There were a period where I thought we were buying them just to sell them on yeah. and make money on them, which it was well, a bit silly for yeah. me. Yeah, it's a bit bit naughty, that, actually, yeah. I think. Um, do you think that the prices of, of things are fair or over the top? Um, because when you think about it, um, what's these tents? I don't know, 400 quid or something like that? Uh, if, you, if you buy the full... Full kit? If you buy the full setup in Seal Nylon, it's four and a half five hundred dollars, isn't it? Yeah. And the DCF version is verging on Illerberg Solo money. Yeah, but what they're, well, they're, they're eight hundred quid now, somewhere, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Is it is it worth the money? I don't think it is. No. It's in recent years, stuff's just gone that silly. Yeah. It's it's not just that because um, camping gear and all that gets and outdoor stuff gets a bit of bad press for being overpriced, but. Yeah. When you when you look at people that are photographers, that, that all that gear is expensive. Yeah. Cyclists, all that gear is expensive. Yeah. Fishing is expensive. So just, what, just everything's got the same way, isn't it? Yeah, they, they see that you've got a passion for something, and they know that you'll pay whatever it is, yeah. is to get it. But the thing for me is that, for the most part, people, including myself, 
we're spending money on gear that because it's of a certain standard but we don't need gear that good um mm. it's like i've got i got rid of my hilleberg um i wasn't using it because i didn't need it mm. uh, most of the camps were you know i was same as you i didn't want to be chasing 60 mile an hour winds anymore yeah. <laughs> been there done that yeah. it's not that enjoyable um well like like we spoke about in it i mean i think the, the Illerberg solo thing is a prime example. Everybody in the father's dog's got one at the minute. Yeah. And when they fetch the black label out, the black label solo, there were people selling the red label solo to buy a black label. Yeah. Now, there's nothing in this country, even in islands of Scotland, that... A, a black label could take that the red label won't no. take yeah, it's like bolt of lightning stuff yeah. that's going to kill both of them isn't it's, it <laughs> I've, I've been I've been caught out twice in 65 70 mile mile an hour winds in that solo not not voluntarily yeah I've gone out and the forecast has been wrong and twice I've been caught out in that type of wind and it's not pleasant no there's why anybody would want to go out voluntarily in that, knowing what they were going into. Yeah. In my mind, is just absolutely balmy. I've 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 been there. I've, I've when I like I was saying earlier, when I got that so low, I was like, yeah, it's bomb of this. I'm going to go out. I'm going out in 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds. Twice in Cheviot, I went I went up Cheviots twice, had your pill and windy gale, 50, 60 mile an hour winds, and I'm laid there a wreck all night. <laughs> And you saw you lay there thinking to say, "What Why? am I doing? Why am I doing this?" Yeah. So like what we've been can't talking. even go out and take a photo, can yeah. you? So you know, the more experience you get, you just think like now nah, what we talk about. Oh, over thirty mile an hour gusts now. Nah. When I look at forecasts, I just think I'm all right for that. I'll wait all next week, or I'll I'll just go out a different yeah. day when it's calmer. It's just I don't know what it is. It like. It's like some, I don't know, some people have got something to prove to somebody or somebody else, haven't they? That's, that's the thing. So what we do um, in society is we spend a lot of money uh, on things that we don't need to get some sort of... Justification. Ju yeah, well, yeah, some sort of reaction from somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's silly. You know, you'll, there's people that that bankrupt themselves to get a Range Rover on the drive because yeah. the next door neighbour's got one. Yeah. And that's the society we're living in, unfortunately. The, the, the um, Illerberg solo thing is, I would bank on 99% of people that own an Illerberg solo won't even use it in anywhere near enough what it's capable of. Yeah. It's just... But, but, but that, that as well, it causes other sorts of issues. So... You know, if you're just camping in really nice weather or just a bit damp or something, they're really bad for condensation. Yeah. Um, so they're not good in some aspects. Mm. They're really good they, for they, photo. This is, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about, like like you were saying earlier, we buy some gear that we don't really need. Yeah. So you buy an Illeberg Solo and you don't go out, you don't, exp you don't take it out in winter. You know, in, in 40 mile an hour, minus yeah. 5 and minus 50 in wind chill and this and that other. You go up a little hill in You go up a little summer. hill or you come come up here. Yeah. You can have an Elm Compact 1. Yeah. An Elm Compact 2 or an, a, a Van Gogh Banshee. You don't need that Illerberg. Yeah, I was say we were... Save yourself 700 quid. We were on, um, where was it? Bow scale fell. Yeah. And it was 50 mile an hour then or whatever it yeah. was. And I think Steve was in the Helm 1. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and it just... Didn't budge, no. just the same as our solos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you said to him after, didn't we? He was, you've got to be impressed with that, aren't you? Yeah. Little, little tent like that, little little wild country Elm one compact, compact one, and it, it took it took what solos took, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So what's your one favourite bit of gear? Yeah, the one thing if you could only keep one item. What's it going to be? Not that it's any good on its own, right? But uh, I've got a set of cricket now. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm absolutely loving that kick it. Yes, it's, it's, it's. I've been really impressed with it because uh, I've had a couple. I've had a couple thing. of tents pitched around you, and I've been flapping about all over yeah. the place. And I don't know how it does it, but it's it's almost like covered in grease or something, and it makes yeah. the wind just go around it. It doesn't move, does it? No. I think it's the like we were saying earlier on with the with these newer mids that are um, the the seams are a straight cut seam, whereas the cricket is a, a catenary cut. For anybody that doesn't know what a catenary cut is, the cut when they're cutting the uh, panels where the seams are stitched together, it's cut on a curve. So when you pitch your tent, instead of it being a straight seam, it's a curved seam towards bottom like that. Yeah. Which in theory is a stronger design of tent, it's a stronger seam. You you don't you, you won't even really need to put the guys art on yeah. it. Uh, like whereas these are like I said they're a straight cut seam and you you, you put your guys art to just get that bit of obscurity. And I think it's that that does it. Yeah. When when that when that cricket's pitched nice and taut, it's going nowhere. Yeah. But for me it, it's gotta be my thermo rest. I'm not sure which one, so I'm in the X light today. Right. Um, just because it's packs a bit smaller. But the X Therm is brilliant. I've got the long wide one. You've got yeah. the wide. Yeah, I've, I've got oh, the you know, your elbows can sit on it. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. I, I um, had to get the large. So it'd, it'd be one of those. It'd be the X Therm that I keep because I could use it all year round. It's yeah. so comfortable, um, really reliable, and warmest toaster. So yeah. That'd be my one favourite bit of gear. Um, and just to finish off, so we're going back to that first wild camping setup that you had. Cheapest chips, budget, did the job and all that kind of stuff. Now, the feeling that you got then when you're camping in that budget gear, is it exactly the same as you get every time you go in anything else? Um, the gear doesn't make the trip, does it? No. The, 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 the place, the area and the enjoyment makes it for me. Yeah. I, I could still have that budget gear what I had all them years ago and still enjoy it as yeah. much as what I do now. It, does, it doesn't matter, that's the thing. No. Yeah, I I had goosebumps, you know, first one on, yeah. you know, on Bamford Edge um, in, in the tent. It was it was brilliant. And if I was in that gear now, it, it wouldn't bother me. I, I'll yeah. camp it out. I love having different stuff and I love mm. playing with it. That's why I, I have way too much gear and it's my job now, so... Yeah. If I don't switch things up a little bit, it might be a little bit stale. Yeah. Um, but if you just want to go camping, just get stuff that is reliable and and just it's the experience that you yeah that makes it, not the gear. Yeah. Um, however, <laughs> I've, I've if that. you have a, if you have a puncture in your ear mat or something like yeah. that, or you're freezing, then that experience isn't as good. Yeah. So you, it's it's this balance between getting some of that is good. And comfortable, yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be expensive. You, you say like it, it's the the as well as the experience, like experiencing what you're doing, having the experience as well in how to know how to use certain bits of kit. Yeah, can make it more enjoyable as well. Yeah, but obviously, to get that experience, you've got to go out and make mistakes. Make mistakes and learn. From what you don't need, what you've done wrong first time, what yeah. you've done right, take the positives, learn from what you've done right, learn from what you've done wrong. Yeah. Learn what kit you can keep using, learn what kit you don't need or you don't you know, you don't use. And you take it from there. Yeah, you, mo from... most times I forget something. So I'm still not right. perfect. I haven't got a checklist or anything yeah, like no, that. I just I'm sure. But as long as I've got my tent and something to sleep on and in, I'm usually all right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's only one night, even if you forget your stove, yeah. you can do it without a bit of snap. It shows it, on, it's, it shows it small bits that I forget because I, I go I go through. I don't have a checklist as such where I you know write yeah. stuff down. I check it off as I'm packing. It, it it's more of a mental checklist. So I put right, I think right, quilt, mag with my spare clothes, down jacket, mat, tent, inner, <laughs> cook set, bag with food in. Sounds like you've got OCD. Oh, yeah, electricals. <laughs> and then after that, you're thinking, hey, I've gone through all that. 
right, what else is there now? And then it's like, you know, there's there's odd times I forgot to put me my spark in. Yeah. And I've ended up using a peg. <laughs> you know, I'm eating my dehydrated yeah. snack with a peg or something like that. You know, I've done things like that. Or an odd time I forgot to put my cup back in my pot. Because when I get home, I wash all my stuff. And it's still on draining board. Yeah. You know, you know, like if I've done a camp, and maybe two or three days later, I've gone out again. And I forgot to pack my, my cup or, my, you know, like I said, my spoon. But the, the main the main gear, yeah. I've not I've touched wood, I've never forgot me an item of my main gear. I've I've got yeah. one I've got one more for you. Um so of all the gear that you've bought, which one's been the biggest waste of money? <laughs> Why? Oh, um, I don't know, to be honest. It's like I say, I, I do me like I've said, I do my research. I delve into every, before I buy out, I delve into everything and, and You almost know before you at, get it. You... At the time you think you're making the right decision. Yeah. But I can't say that I've ever bought something and I've used it once and thought, well that's just been an absolute waste <laughs> waste of money. I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think at all that I've ever... Yeah, you're lucky, I'm well. Yeah. For me, it's it's got to be that um, ever new little tiny titanium stove thing. Yeah. Uh, silly money, over 100 quid for this yeah. little thing. And it, it was it was rubbish. Right. Uh, I've had people that message said that they love theirs, but for me, save your money. Yeah. Um, you're paying for the, the gimmick. Yeah. Right, thanks for that. Yeah, Put the wheels to rights again. Yeah, we've had a good hour, uh, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get me a Dan. Not in a rush to get outside today. It's been raining most at night. No leaks, though. There is a little bit of condensation. Ready for this. Thanks everyone who's entered uh, the giveaway for one of these over on the website. And for all of you that's entered to win the full wild camping setup as well. Uh, There's quite a lot of gear there, so good luck with that anyway. Um, still time if anyone wants to enter, link in the description below. Oh dear. Stopping out here long, it's horrible. So it's days like this when this kind of shelter excels. There's absolutely acres of space in here. So packing your gear away when it's pissing it down, it's, it's so much easier. So get cracked on, then we'll drop the tent and see what the, the walk home brings. So being able to open both doors is brilliant. Great access, if the weather's nice, <laughs> you can have perfect views. I didn't think after the first outing with this tent that I was ever going to love it, but fingers crossed, we'll get there. So this is where we had all the great views yesterday. Massive drop down there, just can't see it. Very different picture today. Just like Tom Cruise, I do all my own stunts. That's me all packed up. Andy's not far behind. One last tip though, <laughs> when it comes to gear. You're better off with cheap waterproofs. Then no waterproofs. Don't forget to bring your kit.